What is going on, my fellow Omi homies? It's Foster, and I'm back at it again with another VVND Comey video. Guys, this last 48 hours or so has just been absolutely incredible, jam-packed with information, and I'm going to do my best to break it down in a timely manner for you. Of course we know, unless you're living under a rock, that we secured Disney Plus as a license, probably the biggest NFT license announcement, not just in VV, but in the entire crypto space to ever come out. Absolutely massive. We get Disney Plus and it comes along with so much real world utility, along with Star Wars and Pixar. And of course we already have Marvel, just so exciting. And then of course they can't even wait 24 hours before they hit us with the topic of today's video, the VV Master Collector Program. We're going to go over this, guys. I'm going to give you my thoughts. I'm going to try and keep it short and concise, but I do want to go through everything with you, give you the thoughts that I have on some of the main points for those of you that may not have seen it in the AMA when I spoke earlier tonight. And uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting. So let's hop right into it. So for those of you guys that haven't seen um, the Master Collector program or who are watching this back after the fact and maybe didn't get a chance to look at the article, it is posted on the official medium for VV. So you can look it up on Google or you can just look at VV underscore official on Twitter and you'll be able to find the article there. So we're going to go through it. I'm not going to go through the entire thing because there are some things that I think are straightforward and aren't points of contention. Everyone kind of agrees on them and they're not things that need to be emphasized. So I'm just gonna go over the points that I've heard kind of the community have some feedback either one way or another and kind of give you my thoughts on where I sit. And then of course, as always, I'm curious to hear what your guys' thoughts will be. And I look forward to reading them down in the comments section below. I do wanna emphasize that this is the first look and they emphasize this three times in the article, but I'm gonna put it out there again because for I've seen a lot of crazy things happening in the market recently once this article was released. So just remember, this is a work in progress. This is their initial outline. And of course it is subject to change. And if you are on this article, you can actually fill out a form and submit your feedback. So when you're hearing my video, if there's something that you, you see and you don't quite agree with it, or you heard it in another source and you haven't taken the opportunity yet, make sure to fill out that form because they will take all of your suggestions to heart and they will see what they can do about implementing as many of them as possible to make sure that the MC is a program that everyone feels welcome in and everyone feels included. So we're going to go through it. Not going to go through the base level stuff, how you earn points and things like that. I think that's all fairly straightforward. Obviously, it's related to do with activity. I really want to focus on the meat and potatoes issues that I've seen come across in the community. So one of the first ones is one-off points versus daily recurring points. I've heard a lot of people have some concerns about how you earn points and the amount of points that you're earning for the specific purchases that you're making. So I don't think anyone really disagrees with you know receiving 100 points for new user onboarding, the 100 points for completing a set, I think everyone's on board with. I think that makes sense. Obviously, getting points from purchasing things in the store or the marketplace is important. That's the bare bone basics of the app and it makes perfect sense. And then of course you also receive, you know, rewards and achievement badges as you continue to move up the point levels. The daily recurring points is where I start to see people take issue. And this is the thing that I really want to kind of give you some perspective on from what I'm seeing and from the people that I've spoken to. And then of course, I'm curious to hear what you guys think. So we know that for collectibles, one point is given for each collectible owned. For those of you that don't know, comic books also count as collectibles for these points. So any collectible that you own, assuming that it's not a duplicate, you will receive 1.4. So if you have 200 collectibles and they're all individual collectibles, you will earn a base level of 200 points per day for those collectibles, okay? Duplicate collectibles are also taken into account, but you will not earn exactly one point for every collectible that you have. So if you have five collectibles, you will earn one point for that first collectible, but then there's a breakdown. So the second collectible, you only earn 0 0.75 points. The third collectible is 0.35 points. And the f if you own four or more collectibles, you only receive 0.1 point. I personally very much agree with this. I think that this prevents, to an extent, motivation of whale manipulation. We will always see price action manipulation in the marketplace, but I think what this allows the program to do is basically to encourage people to have collectibles available to be collected by the masses rather than having someone sit on 500 or 1,000 of a specific type of collectible. It may hold value monetarily, but it will not hold value as much for the collectibles that they're holding because they get only 0.1 points. So let's say they hold 500, they would only get 
roughly 50 points for that rather than 500. So I think that that was a necessary balance and I was glad to see that that was a part of the program. There are also collectible bonus points. Collectible bonus points are awarded specifically based on rarity and mint number. So we know that currently the system is designed in such a way that if you hold a rare, you get an extra 0.2 points, an ultra rare, you get 0.3 points, and a secret rare is 0.5 points. This is something that I have seen been quite a bit of a contentious issue in the community. I think a lot of people feel as though 0.5 points extra for a secret rare is not nearly enough for generally what a secret rare comic or collectible would go for. I have my opinions on that, but I want to go through this last part and then we'll circle back to it. You also get a low edition bonus. So you get 0.5 points for having collectibles with a sub 150 mint and 0.5 points for digital comics within the first 150 available to the public. The reason that they had to make that distinction is that generally with comics, a lot more editions are held back. So there may be 500 editions that VV holds on to. So they couldn't say sub 150 mint because no one is going to be able to access a sub 150 mint in that case. I like that they're giving a little bit of an incentive for sub 150 mints. But once again, people are not necessarily happy about this number, and we're going to circle back to that in a moment. Finally, what I want to focus on before we really break things down is the collectible sets. So currently, the way that they have it is that if you have a, a collectible that completes a set and it's a one of one, think as an example, Peggy Carter, Superman, Lucky, Big Barda, Starfire, etc., you will get 1.5 points per day for that set completion. So in this instance, as an example, if you hold a Superman, you will get one point for every day that you hold it. And then you also get an additional 1.5 points for completing the set. So for the Superman, you would get 2.5 points per day. Conversely, if you have a Lucky, you would get one point per day for completing or uh, for holding the collectible, 1.5 points for completing the set, but then you would also get the 0.5 secret rare bonus for it being a rarity, which means you would actually get 0.5 more points. So you would get three points instead of 2.5. This distinction is important because I think that in the price action that we're currently seeing, and shout out to Bravos Assassin for creating this website. Any of you can access it, I'll leave it down in the description below. It's called VV Setlist. And what he's done is he's put together the Master Collector point values that you would get for completing every single set that currently exists on VV based on all of the factors taken into consideration here. The only factor that I think is not taken into consideration is the sub 150 mint, which would give you a unique rarity bonus, but I think it would get too complicated and convoluted had he done that. So great work by him. So as an example, we were talking about Superman, the floor, or at least as of yesterday, because this hasn't been updated because Akomi Wiki is down, it was worth $975 and you would get 2.5 points. But you could get Captain Carter which is $390 for 2.7 points. So you could own two and a half Captain Carters for the same price that you could own one Superman and you would get diminishing returns, but you would get far more points for holding multiple Captain Carters than you would for holding one Superman for the same price. And of course, if we scroll all the way up to the top, we can see that if you complete the Kripken set, which before this article was released, was actually cheaper than completing Superman, you could buy all 12 collectibles for cheaper than what Superman was listed. It would give you 18.9 Master Collector points, which of course, compared to your Superman at 2.5 points for the same price, is like an 8x difference, which is absolutely massive. Why is this the case? Well, it's because you get six points if you have a collectible set for five collectibles or more. You also get a point for each collectible that you complete. And then you also get the rarity bonus for the ultra rare and rare Kripkins. So it's very interesting to see this meta that is now starting to form with people taking this information and they're, they're going crazy, guys. They are selling all of their secret rare comic books. They're selling some, even some high secret rare collectibles, Todd's, things that will have inherent value and will be worth monetarily quite a bit moving forward. They're selling them off because they're trying to complete this Kripkins, Unicorno, Myrmicorno sets that are generally, of course, they've spiked up quite a bit because of this announcement, but we're generally quite cheap to complete. And we're seeing that, you know, we look right now, Ghostbusters is 35,000 to complete. It only gives you 12 points, but I could spend 1,600 
dollars, complete a Kripken set and get six more points. So people are saying, well, this isn't fair. This isn't balanced. You're not rewarding me for collecting. And that's what I want to get into with you guys today. And I want to give you some of my thoughts on this. I know it may not be a popular opinion, but I think it's important to get it out there so we can continue the conversation so that the team can take all of this feedback and continue to improve the program as best as they can for as many people that participate. So let's break it down a little bit. We know that you get one point for every collectible that you own. I think that that's fairly reasonable. I don't see anyone having any arguments with that. I know that some people feel as though duplicates you should maybe get more i know some people feel for duplicates you should get less i very much like the system that they've employed for this like i said previously they are encouraging you to still collect and enjoy your fandom but they're not saying that hoarding a hundred of a specific item is going to benefit you for master collector which is fantastic and the reason that it's fantastic is a very obvious exploit to this program would be to go out and buy the cheapest comic book that is currently listed on the marketplace and if you could get full points for holding all of those comics moving forward then i could just go out and buy 500 comics for a thousand dollars and i would have more points than someone that is collecting almost every set and is going about the program quote unquote the right way the other issue of contention and probably the biggest issue of contention that i'm seeing is the rarity point bonus i don't think anyone has expressed any specific concerns about rare and ultra rares but people have had some pretty uh, definitive concerns about the secret rare both in the actual physical collectibles and in the comic books i think even probably more so in the comic books i've noticed quite a few content creators as well as members of the community been very vocal and speak out about the fact that they feel as though there is no longer an incentive to collect secret rare collectibles and i take issue with this as someone who has bought every single comic collectible that has come out since collectible started with marvel comics number one i have secured only one secret rare on drop and that was the amazing spider-man number one it cost me seven dollars and it is currently worth eight thousand dollars i could sell that comic and buy a hundred to 300 common comics currently in the marketplace. And I would probably get anywhere between 50 to 100 more master collector points from doing this than I would holding that collectible. Why do I not see this as an issue? Because a lot of people feel as though this is the issue and this is what breaks the app. I have a couple points. The first of which is not all secret rares are created equal. Perfect example being the MGM ticket that was released that had seven editions. The cheapest one on the marketplace right now is $300,000. It earns you 1.5 points for holding per day. Golden Moogly in the tens of thousands of dollars earns you 1.5 points per day and there's only 150 editions of them. But I can turn around and buy the Hooverville Labbit that was released with 3,300 editions for under $1,000. And it would be worth the same amount of points as the 007 ticket, the Golden Moogly, and any other secret rare that's priced at a higher point that has far less editions. So why is this fair? Well, it's not necessarily fair, right? Not all collectibles are created equal. Why is it fair that I can buy a Peggy Carter that was $25 on the drop that has 6,000 additions and have it be worth more than a Superman, which also completes a set from arguably a bigger character, an FA, and which was more expensive on the drop. Why should I get more points for doing that? And this is the game that we start to play with ourselves is, well, if this isn't fair, then this isn't fair. And you could go on like this all day. And of course you could do the same thing with the low edition bonus. Well, Right now, Donnie only has 150 editions. So why should someone that has Donnie edition number 150 get the same bonus as someone that has Donnie edition number 41? Why is that fair? Why is it fair that I could go out and get a Captain America common sub 150 for $200 and have it give me additional points the same that it would cost me five to $10,000 to go out and get a sub 150 Rizzo? Why is that fair? Well, it's not necessarily. The collector's program 
is meant to be an add-on to collecting the fandoms that you love and enjoy. This program was never designed, in my opinion, to dictate what collectibles you should or should not be purchasing on the app. It's simply just there to give you an additional bump up, not even an incentive, just an extra, hey, congratulations for doing this. We're going to give you some points towards the program. Some people still don't see it that way. But once again, I would much rather going to my secret rare comic example, I would much rather hold my Amazing Spider-Man number one secret rare comic for 1.5 points per day than hold 300 common versions of a Fantastic Four comic that no one cares about. Because at the end of the day, the inherent value in what I hold is the scarcity and the additions of that collectible and the value that it's going to have to other collectors moving forward. And that's what people need to start to understand is that points are aren't the end all to be all. They're not a currency that you can use to cash out and make money off of. Gems are the currency in the app. And I'm not going to make nearly as much money from holding cheap common collectibles or comics than I am from holding these valuable sought after big brands, even if it's not a secret rare, those have value as collectibles and that is what makes them worth the money and that is why they're worth collecting. I saw a really interesting comment and I don't know that I necessarily agree with it, but I feel like it's important to throw out and it comes from the homie Cavell Anderson. He put out a tweet earlier tonight and he was talking about the fact that he actually thinks that commons should be worth more points than secret rares to further incentivize people to not sleep on or undervalue these common comics and these common collectibles to allow all of these floors to rise together. Was a secret rare ever designed to go from $7 to $50,000? No, I don't think that that was ever the intention when David Yu and Dan Carruthers created this program, but the collecting has taken on a life of its own because of the fandom. So what can we do to continue to encourage and incentivize those fandoms while balancing a program that everyone feels welcome in? The other thing that you need to remember is that secret rares and low edition collectibles are often reserved whether intentionally or not, for whales or collectors that have the most money. they are Those types of collectibles are generally going to gravitate to the people that have the most money. So why are we going to continue to incentivize them by giving them even more points and further creating an imbalance between the average user that wants to participate in the program and the whales that are already going to get the financial resources from having those sought after collectibles. So this is the balance that we need to find. And I'm not saying that they've done it perfectly here. And I will go through a couple of the exploits that I've noticed that I feel that need to be addressed that I've actually submitted the form for for the team. And I'm also curious to hear your thoughts about them as well. But one final thing before we move on from all of this, and I think it's really important to emphasize this and for people to understand is that the point Points that we accrue are used for the drop lottery. People are selling off their collectibles that are worth thousands and thousands of dollars because they are trying to collect as many collectibles or the collectibles that are worth the most points for the collector's program in order to get as many points as possible. And I want to give you guys this perspective because I feel like I owe it to the community to let you guys know that a lot of you are going to get hurt by this. And it's not even just the financial ramifications of selling your collectibles, which will in turn go up a lot in value. I am guilty of that as everyone else, not necessarily related to this program, but I have sold collectibles far before they should have been sold and for much lower price points than they should have been sold at. So I'm not preaching at you. I'm not lecturing you. I'm just giving you the perspective as someone who's been there and has made the mistake before. The drop lottery is essentially a wagering system that you can participate in from the points that you earn and accrue through all of these in-app activities, whether it be purchasing or engagement in the app, and you can bet them to gain exclusive access to a limited edition percentage of drops within VV on the primary market. So as a perfect example, Edo, which was dropped just a few weeks ago, had about 2,000 additions. And David, or Dan Carruthers, pardon me, came out and said that there was almost 50,000 people competing for those 2,000 additions. 
So you had under a 4% chance of securing that collectible. And of course we know for anyone that didn't secure a collectible, there was a lot of disappointment. I for one did not secure the collectible on drop and I went out and spent over a thousand dollars picking it up afterwards because I really wanted to complete that set because I understood the value in it being a season one series and the fandom that it will get in Jap Japan and Asian culture. So I went out and spent that money and I had no problem doing that because I understood the value proposition of it. But of course I was still disappointed not to secure the collectible. This drop lottery system, if we use Edo as an example, instead of 2000 editions being available, maybe 1% of those collectibles gets put up early on the drop lottery, which means that you now have 20 editions that you can go for. If there are 50,000 people interested in securing Edo, there is likely a large percentage of those same people that would be interested in wagering their points in order to get early access and ensure that they secure one of those 20 editions and then that way they don't even have to compete in the drop. We know based on the drop lottery how it works currently is that if you wager points, you are put into the eligibility and once the, the wagering ends, the people that wager the most points relative to the amount of collectibles that are available. So in this example, 20 collectibles are available. The top 20 people that wagered the most points will get access to buying that collectible. And every other single person not only will not secure that collectible that way, but all of their points are now then burnt as well. People are making a huge deal about selling all of their collectibles that are worth thousands upon thousands of dollars in order to earn these points for an opportunity that will likely, unless you are the biggest whales in the community and have infinitely more points than anyone else, it will give you one shot on one collectible to go for it and hope that you secure it on maybe what's even less than a 4% chance. And what happens when you don't secure that? Unlike in a drop where you just don't spend your gems, now all of your points are gone and now you need to work for months again to accrue all of those points. This is just a fun mini game in my mind that they have created to, to, to add a little bit, like almost like a gambling feeling. They want you to feel like you have a chance. You've bought a 50-50 ticket and they really want to give you a chance to hit that lottery, that top but if I don't win the 50-50, I don't get my money back that I paid for those tickets. My tickets have been burnt. They've gone towards whatever they've gone towards. So remember, everyone that is selling all of these collectibles are selling them for a what's possibly a 1 in 100 or even worse statistical chance to secure a collectible. And I know what everyone is thinking. Well, Foster, I'm just going to save all of my points for the coolest collectible that I really want. We have 800,000 users on the app, guys. You don't think that there's going to be at least 10 to 20 other people that that one collectible that you really want, they're going to want it too. So just remember, points aren't everything. They're just like a, they're like a freebie. It's like a daily login bonus when you play video games on your phone and they're like rewarding you for coming back. And then you spend them and they disappear. You don't think about them. People are putting way too much emphasis, in my opinion, on these points and what they believe they will do for them. And I'm afraid, and not to knock the Master Collector program, because I think it's great, but I think a lot of people are putting far too much emphasis on the importance of these points. We haven't even seen the Omi Utility program come out yet. We have no idea what points are going to, is it going to be the same points that you get with Master Collector? It's just you get them from staking your Omi. Is it a completely separate track? Is staking your Omi giving you an even further advantage over just normal Master Collectors? We have absolutely no idea. We we don't have these answers to these things. And once again, to reiterate it, because they mention it several times in the article, it's a work in progress plan. Don't freak out. And everyone is freaking out. And we need to take a step back, be level-headed and understand the rash decisions that you're making right now with your collectibles could turn out to cost you a significant amount of money in the long run. And I don't want to see that happen to you guys. That... I want to hammer that point home. With that being said, 
The last part of the video that I want to cover are some of the exploits that I've noticed on the Master Collector program, because like I said, it's not a perfect program and there are things that need to be worked on and I do believe they will be addressed, but I still think it's important to address them in this video because I don't want anyone coming to me in the comment section and saying, oh, he only ever talks about the good. He doesn't want to focus on the bad. I want to give you the full picture, but I want to give it to you from a rational perspective and not someone who's just jumping on one specific thing and making it out to be a bigger deal than maybe it needs to be. I want to emphasize this one point on the article. They mentioned it a couple times. There will be measures in place to prevent users from exploiting, abusing, or otherwise gaming the system. So don't make any rash decisions about your collections or purchasing activity based on this article. Some of the exploits that I have noticed that I want to focus on are specifically the one and done points that you get from securing a drop. So as an example, the one and done points that you get, as we can see here, you get 100 points for completing a set. When you complete a set on your account, you will receive those points and it's retroactive. So even if you've already sold the set or you've traded it to someone, you will still get those points. So something that I've noticed, and that's something that people could clearly take advantage of, is that my wife has an account, I have an account. I could send all of my sets to my wife's account. I will already have received those 100 points she will then also receive those 100 points on her account for all the sets that I send her. The only thing that she won't receive is the 15 or 25 bonus per collectible for buying them in the marketplace. But once again, I could just send her, I think I have 25 sets right now, that is 2,500 points that she is now getting over the next person for free. She didn't spend any money and then she just transfers them right back to me. You could take this a step further now. You could have people creating businesses where they transfer the collectibles that they own to spoof accounts to give them points. And then they go out and sell those accounts that already have points to people that want to enter the community or even, God forbid, bots or people that have nefarious intentions. So it is something that needs to be addressed. And my solution to this and what I suggested to the team is that you can still allow people to accrue points from transferring sets, but make it so that the person has to hold the set for a specific period of time before they're able to receive this bonus. If they have to hold it for seven days before they get the 100 points, it doesn't you know, completely negate the possibility that someone could do this, but it drastically reduces the frequency at which it could be done to prevent this exploit from happening very often. I also clarified with them and asked the question, if I send a collectible to someone, like a Peggy Carter, for instance, and then they send it back to me, do I get 100 points again for completing that set? And I'm fairly confident the answer is no, it's marked on your account that you've already completed that set, even once you've sold it. You may not hold it in your collection, but you will only ever receive those points for completing a set once, which I think is good. Something else that I've noticed that is interesting is that people could buy multiple commons after selling higher collectibles for more points. And I've discussed that previously, it is an exploit. It's up to you, that's a user beware thing. If you wanna sell your secret rare and high value collectibles for a bunch of low mint collectibles, I've discussed why I think it's not a very good idea, not in your best interest to do it, but it is an option that is available to people and it would likely net them more points. So if points are the most important thing to you, that is an exploit that you could use, but it's at your own financial risks. Something that I could see people doing a lot more often now is something that I'm going to speak on as well, and that's going for common or the most available edition on the market or in the store on drop day to ensure that they secure a drop so that they're guaranteed to get that extra 25 points for making that purchase from VB. Because right now, if we all compete for the ultra rare, or secret rare, or most one or whatever, one out of every you know 20 to 100 of us might get it. And then the rest of us are going to the secondary market buying it anyways, but now you're not getting those points. Whereas that 25 points is really equivalent to you holding 20 secret rares. So you could just go out and buy a common if you're pretty confident that you're not gonna secure the secret rare anyways, buy a common on drop day in the marketplace, get that one point for getting it, get the 25 points for making a market purchase, and then you can go into the secondary market and get 15 points plus whatever you buy for that collectible and then get those points that way. So I do see that will likely form as some, some type of meta. And I think you will notice a lot of the, the newer users to the app focusing on this strategy to try and level up their points as quickly as possible. The final thing that I've noticed, and once again, this is one of those 
do at your own financial risk is that people could buy super cheap collectibles from a friend in the market and flip them back and forth to one another incurring the 2.5% fee or you know if they were silly enough to do it with Marvel or MGM the 8.5% fee and earn points from making a market purchase back and forth. Now this is something that I don't know that they can necessarily govern because you have a lot of commons that don't go for very expensive. So you could find a collectible that you think is not very popular and list it for slightly under floor and maybe take a dollar hit each time you do it and accrue points back and forth with a friend as you do that. And maybe for $100 spent, you could probably earn, if you did it 100 times, you could earn 1,500 points, which is not a small amount. But once again, if someone snipes that listing for a cheap price while you're trying to do it with your friend before your friend buys it, neither of you now own that collectible and you've lost out on that money. So I consider that a risky play. And I also think, and once again, focusing on the article, I very much think that they will have something in place to prevent the gaming of the system. I do not think that you'll be able to sell the same collectible over and over, or if they have algorithms in place to notice patterns, I think it will get to the point where they will say, no, you've, you've made a hundred sales in the market today. Like you, you're going to take a break. We're going to put you on a cool off because that's just not in general circumstances, normal market activity. So these are some of my initial thoughts on the Master Collector program. Overall, I think it's a great program. I think it's very well balanced and I'm very excited to see where I'll sit within it compared to each and every one of you. I look forward to competing with you guys for drops and I look forward to seeing the utility that gets rolled out with the OMI utility article when that is released, hopefully at some point in the next few weeks and we can see how everything meshes together. Once again, guys, I know this was a longer video than I intended it to be, but I really hope that you're finding the information valuable. If you do find my content valuable, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I am a growing channel and I am doing my best to put out content for you as often as I can. And the engagement that I get from you guys continues to motivate me and ensures that I put out content as much as I can. And of course, if you guys have any content that you'd like to see, make sure to post it down in the, content, uh, in the comment section below. Thank you all for watching. I love you guys. Peace.